Chapter 22 I became a good pitcher when I stopped trying to make them miss the ball and started trying to make them hit it. Sandy Koufax, pitcher, Los Angeles Dodgers. Klebo held the book up like it was a Bible, and he was the revival preacher. He hollered at the top of his voice, You gonna read us a book, house? Several ball players goffed along with Klebo. Honey cowered against Yodora. Ruby crossed her arms in front of her overalls and watched. Klebo opened the book and turned in a slow circle, showing the open pages to the group. It's a bunch of poetry, his voice was hoarse. A book of poetry from a dead man's house. Klebo froze like he was in a freeze-tag statue making his point. Finesse was shocked into silence, as was everyone else under the chinaberry tree. A scrap of paper fluttered from the open pages and settled like a feather into the shade under the tree. House's knees wobbled. A wind rose up and a hoot owl called, such an unusual sound in the bright of day. The sun baked the earth and House made himself breathe. It's a book by Walt Whitman, he said quietly, the same guy who wrote about baseball in your note from Mr. Norwood, Francis. Finesse bit her lip. This book explains what I'm talking about. House said. He picked up the scrap of paper and licked his lips. Here's a piece of it. He called on his mother, and he called on Mr. Norwood Boyd. He straightened his shoulders, and he took the plunge, and he read them the poem. After dazzle of day is gone, only the dark, dark night shows to my eyes the stars. After the clangor of organ, majestic, or chorus, or perfect band, silent athwart my soul moves the symphony true. Finesse took a step backward, as if her knees had given out on her. Melba rushed to her side. Are you all right? Finesse waved her off. There ain't nothing about baseball game in there, said Klebo, nor no pageant. And we ain't got us an organ or a chorus or a band. We just got a crazy ball team captain. I vote for a new captain. Who's with me? Don't you see, said House. He understood the connection. Mr. Norwood Boyd's time was over. House's time was now. He stepped into the moment where the past and the present met and became more than he had been. It doesn't matter, he said. It doesn't matter if we have a game or a pageant or both. It really doesn't matter. And you know why? Because we're all going to be as dead as doornails one day, as dead as Mr. Norwood Boyd. And then what? The sun beamed through a cloud. There would be a re rescue. There would be a rescue. House would provide it himself. There's the symphony, he said, his voice clipped and sure. It's everybody working together. It's... You don't make no sense, shouted Klebo. House shoved one hand in Klebo's face like a stop sign. He took his book back with the other. I'm talking, Klebo. I'm approaching the problem. Shut up. I ain't gonna shut up. You're a crazy person. Where'd you get that book? asked Lincoln Latham. I can tell you where he got it, said Klebo on fire. He stole it. He stole it from Mean Man Boyd. Kid squealed and gasped. Klebo gathered steam from the clangor. He poked his finger at every ball player under the chinaberry tree. Ned, Boone, Evan, and all you... We've every one of us suffered because of House for a whole year now. We lost our game last year for the first time ever because House let his arm be broken by a girl. He still don't have his arm completely back. We got a game in two weeks, and now he wants to turn us into dancers. He wants us to cooperate with the girl who lost our game for us. Is that what you want? And who's then that? Klebo stabbed his finger at House. This boy has been going over to Mean Man's haunted house every day since he broke his arm. He's been working in cahoots with Baby Eater Boyd. Read him cookbooks, help him cook those little kidnapped kids. He's had cut up in his freezer for years. He's been eating those babies himself. That's what's wrong with him. I tell you true, he's brainwashed. Even the birds stopped singing. No one spoke or moved. And why did he keep his doings a secret? Klebo was a geyser, spouting whatever came into his head next. He wanted the treasure. Everybody knows that house is full of treasure. Where is it? 
Sweat poured down Klebo's angry face. Where is it, house? Twenty-one children and one old dog breathed in quiet anticipation under the chinaberry tree and waited to see what would happen next.